Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to my Beautiful Nights channel. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to make this really cool looking earring. Now, this design actually came from a bracelet that I just designed. And when I made the bracelet, I was looking at it and I'm thinking, I, I, could, I think I can get other designs out of this. So then I made it into an earring and it looks really darn neat. And I'm thinking that the design can also be made into a ring, maybe, and maybe even a necklace. But the thing is, is I'm actually out of this bead right here, which is very important to my design because it matches the ring, which is the whole centerpiece of the design. So anyways, um, I'm doing... A, earring tutorial now. My next tutorial I'm going to film after this is going to be the bracelet. The bracelet is the bomb. It is killer. I love it so much. And um, I'm going to see how you guys react to it. If you give me a lot of likes, if I get a lot of views on it, I might do a ring and a necklace. But if I don't get a lot of reaction from you guys, then I probably won't do it because it is a lot of work. Now, these earrings here are pretty simple to make. The bracelet is going to be more technical. There's not much that I can fast forward through because a lot of these steps are very important. I can't really go through them. But um, yeah, this is a really cool, unusual design. And I'm loving it so much. So let's go ahead and go over the materials. So you will need to cut two four-foot pieces of eight-pound fire line. You will also need a size 10 beading needle. I'm using Tulip. It's my favorite. It's the most durable needle I've ever used and the longest lasting. They are the best. You also need these 8mm check ring beads. I got these just recently in a check beads exclusive subscription. I actually kind of have some already in my stash. Um, the ones I have are from Michaels. They're, uh, what is it? Purple Iris. And I actually used one of them, you'll see in my next video. But um, yeah, you can find these at other places, but it is kind of rare to find them. You can go to Michaels and try to find them. I have seen them in the matte bronze iris color mix if you're lucky but that was a long time ago that I got them but um anyways I was stupid and I took the label off of this bag but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go online I'm going to find these at Check Beads Exclusive and I'm going to put them down there in the description bar in case you want to get the same exact ones and again these are 8 millimeter check ring beads you will also need 12 6 millimeter check mates I'm using a blue Picasso or turquoise Picasso and you're going to need 32 80 seed beads and I'm using Miyuki brand now if you want to do all one color of three millimeter check fire posh beads you will need 58 beads but since I'm splitting mine in two I have 26 of one color and 32 of another color and you're also going to need 11 OC beads and I found Toho to be best for this I haven't messed around with a lot of other brands because Toho's are thicker than Miyuki and uh, check I find that they work really good for this project if you do go with Miyuki or Machek, you might have to increase your bead counts in some areas, or they might not even work. Because some designs um, that work with Toho really good don't work with other brands. That's what I've come to learn after many years of experimenting. You're also going to need earring findings, and I am using lever backs. So this is the list of materials, and like I said, I will link them down below. Oh, and by the way, I also just recently bought these from Check Beads Exclusive. They are... Uh, three millimeter red Picasso. I will link those down below too. So first we're going to start by making the center and to do that I have to pick up a three millimeter bead and by the way I did forget to mention that you can do Drux. These are Drux or uh, check fire polish beads. Either or will work in this and they're both the same size three millimeter. So I'm picking up one three millimeter and then I'm going to pick up my check ring bead and I'm going to slide these down like this and I need to leave an 8 inch tail because I have to come back later and uh, tie this off at 8 inches was like the perfect length to do it with so I just go like this right here I hold the mark at 8 slide that bead down and uh, what I'm doing is I'm going like this passing through this bead holding it in place and then I have this okay and I'll just double check to make sure and actually pass Pull through some right there that's good okay so now I'm going to hold this like this make sure it's tight okay and then you want to pick up the outside bead which for me is going to be the gold okay and then the inside bead again like this and I'm going to take and pass through this ring like that Pull the thread through and then pass back up through this and you're looping the thread around the ring. Pull 
pull it tight and I do find that you have to wiggle hold the beads like this between your fingers and pull them tight you want it to be very tight do not want it to be loose at all now I have this and I'm going to do that again so again pick up the gold three millimeter and then the red three millimeter or whatever color you're using like I said you could do all the same color if you want but it does look a lot more interesting if you do two different colors instead of the same color okay so I just picked up two beads and I'm going through the three again pull it tight use your fingernails to slide the bead down now I'm going to have 10 red here in a circle and 10 gold in a circle it's very important to have 10 especially when we go to make the bracelet now I will say that if you're just doing earrings you probably could do 11 or on the inside and 11 on the outside but um, with the bracelet it's super important to have an even number you don't want an odd number okay so like I'm saying what, what I'm saying is if you are if you have rings in your stash and they're not 8 millimeter maybe they're 10 millimeter you would have to use more beads to go around right makes sense so if you did earrings a larger ring might be okay it might work but with the bracelet you have to be very precise on your size and how many you use okay so I just picked up some more beads going through here again pulling this down I have to pull it all tight okay I have four red right now I'm gonna keep going pick up a gold three millimeter and a red and by the way, these gold beads that I'm using, they are matte. I've seen them called Aztec Gold at some other places. I think Potomac calls them that. But um, I'm actually not crazy about this gold finish because it tarnishes. It gets dark. It turns like a brown color. Like a bronze. Which is not good if you want it to stay gold. So whenever I'm not wearing these uh, kinds of beads and jewelry I make sure that I store them in a plastic bag with a silica packet so they don't tarnish so again I'm picking up my outside bead the gold and then the inside bead and I have to turn this as I work around I'm passing through this loop here and then I have to sew up through the red bead and every time you do this you have to stop and slide that bead down to the ring make sure it's super tight look at that it's so cool already okay I have six red so far I'm gonna do another gold and then my red go through this ring here yeah and uh, this gold finish I am super bummed out about it because I bought it in Super Duos, I got 100 grams of Super Duos in this gold color, and I also bought the uh, Potomac cut buttons. I bought 100 of those, and in case you didn't know, they are pricey. They are really expensive. I think it was like $35 for 100 of them, maybe even more. So yeah, I spent a lot of money on this finish, and come to find out it tarnishes. And it's super popular, this metallic finish. And I guess the people that buy it don't know that it tarnishes. Okay, and when it tarnishes, you can't clean it. It does not go back to its original looking self. So I'm going to go through this bead now. Let's see, how many do I have? Uh, eight. So I got to keep going because I need ten. So I have to pick up gold and then the red. Turn this. Go through here. And then pass through my red bead. Pull it tight. Okay. So I have nine. I have to do it again. Right? I gotta make sure there's eight. Okay. Yes. So a gold and then the red. And we're gonna go through here. It's very important that I have this part right because uh, one time I made it 
and I, I didn't count the beads right and I got almost to the end and I realized because I got to a step that I couldn't continue on because I didn't do 10 in the center so real quick one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay now what I have to do this might seem a little strange I'm going to take the my tail and I'm going to pick up one gold bead the outside color okay and then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to crisscross through this bead bring it down so now we have two complete rings the red Picasso ring and the gold ring just like that it's cute isn't it there's a lot of stuff that can be made just from this right here there's there's so many possibilities and I love how the thread looks on the on the ring it just adds to the design okay now I'm going to take um, 80 seed beads and I'm going to fill in the gaps going all the way around now in the bracelet which will be my next tutorial instead of using 80 seed beads I'm actually using these uh, they're like 2.5 millimeter 3 millimeter size rondelles in between but um I wanted to do more experimenting with this project and I didn't have enough rondelles so I found out that they're actually the same size as 80 seed beads so there is an alternative you can use rondelles in place of these 80 seed beads as long as they are the same size they will work so I'm just putting the 80 seed beads in between the three millimeter beads here going all the way around filling in the gaps just like this so I'm just going to go around and complete my circle. And I am using Miyuki sea beads. Toho um, might not work for this area because Toho's are much thicker than Miyuki. Check I think would work though. I think Czech seed beads are a lot more similar to Miyuki from what I've experienced with designing. I can use those a lot in projects together and they'll be fine. Okay, and then I'm going to go at my last one here. I'm going to put it through that bead like that. Okay, and then I just got to make sure that my tail's not twisted. It's not, it's all good. Okay, I'm going to pull my working tail tight both tails tight actually and this is what I have really pretty now if you do uh, make this and when you pull it tight if it's not flat like mine see how mine's very flat if it's flexing like a bowl then you have the wrong size beads and um, what you could do is go through your beads and make sure that they are all uniform in the same shape and size to fix that problem if you have that problem if it is turning into a bowl shape it is because the beads are too thin narrow and that's why it's doing it and if it's warped really bad if it does something like this it's because the beads are too thick hope this makes sense so I'm going to show you my color layout in this. So I just did this here and I'm going to start picking up these checkmates and on top of a checkmate I'm going to pick up a three millimeter bead and because I'm using two different colors here I'm going to be now going to the red Picasso so I'm going to pick up a checkmate and a red Picasso and um, in between I will then have gold so um, if you're doing all the same color you're just going to pick up all the same color, but if you're going to do two different colors, uh, my point of my color layout is um, up here looking at the top, it's red, and then it's red, gold, red, and then red, gold, red, gold, red. That's my pattern. Okay, so I'm going to pick up a checkmate and a red Picasso, slide it down like this. I'm going to pass the needle through the checkmate. I'm going to go back into the same bead, but I'm going to go into the opposite hole. So coming out of here, I'm actually going to turn and go through this side of the bead. And then I have to reposition my needle for the next bead. So I'm going to go through the 80 and through the next 3 millimeter, lining myself up and slide the needle through. And to get this straight, I'm going to go like this, hold this bead here, okay? 
and then pull my tail so that it's not crooked and I have to straighten that bead out there and pull this tight. And I also like to put my needle in here to straighten out the three millimeter on top just like that and then I'm gonna pick up another checkmate a three millimeter slide it down I'm gonna go down the checkmate and again I have to go through the same bead but in the opposite hole so coming out of here I actually need to go through this side and then through the 80 and then through the three millimeter like that pull this through I'm gonna slide this bead down again here trying to straighten this out okay there we go and then I'm going to pull my work tail like this I have to spin it around straighten this out pull it tight oops like this I'm going to pick up my checkmate and then my three millimeter slide it down I'm gonna go through my checkmate and then I have to go through my three millimeter just the three millimeter this time okay pull through and then I'm going to go like this again and slide the bead down, hold it in place, pull my tail through, straighten this bead out, pull it tight, flip it back over. Okay, so I'm coming out of the check fire posh bead, the three millimeter round. Now what I got to do is go to my 11 seed beads, Toho seed beads. If you totally do not have Toho's, you can try this with seven Miyuki's or seven uh, uh, check seed beads. But I don't know if it'll work. It might not work. Okay, here is six. I'm going to go through this bead here. Okay. And these beads are going to wrap around the checkmate. Like that. And then I'm going to swap over to the gold now. So looking back here, I'm coming out right here. I have to pick up an 80, the gold bead, and an 80. 80 gold bead actually I have to go up into uh, a checkmate. So I'm picking this order of beads up. And looking back here, I have to put gold on the top, or not gold, red on the top of this one. So this is the order of beads I'm actually picking up this area sliding the beads down I'm gonna go down through the checkmate and I'm gonna hold the beads like this in between my fingers okay so that it's snug and it doesn't get loose on me because this area here wants to loosen up pull that through and then I'm gonna take the needle and I'm gonna go through this gold bead like this okay again hold this between your fingers pull it through Pull it tight like that. Pick up an 80 seed bead and go through the next three millimeter. Pull it tight. I'm going to pull it tight and I'm going to grab this three millimeter bead there. Pull that so it looks like this. I'm going to pick up an 80 seed bead again, the gold, the checkmate, my red bead, slide it down, do the same thing, hold these beads in place while you're passing through the checkmate so it doesn't get loose. Okay, and then go through this gold bead on the three millimeter at the base of the checkmate. Hold it in place, pass it through, like that. Pick up an 80 seed bead and go through this 3 millimeter. Pull it tight, just like this. 
so pretty. I love these colors. Okay. So coming out here, I have to pick up my six Toho. I love those. So it's six or eight, seven. Okay, there it is, six. Then I'm going to go through this three millimeter here now. Pull it tight. And then I have to go up through this checkmate. Okay, we have to reposition our needle. I'm going to go through this 80 seed bead here. And because of how I have to decorate the top, I have to shoot through all of these beads, believe it or not, and come out in this direction. Okay. Going through here. Pull it tight. Then I'm going to pick up six 11 O's again. Okay. And then I'm going to go down through this truck, like that, and I have to do this area here now, so I'm going to pick up 180, I'm going to pick up a gold, my last checkmate, and my 3 millimeter bead, sliding it down, again hold the beads in place while you pass through so it doesn't loosen up. And then pass through this three millimeter here. And then pick up an 80 and pass through this three millimeter like this. Now I do see that this here is a little loose on me so I'm going to grab this bead, pull that tight, and then pull my working tail tight and it tightens it up for me. Okay, But my uh, druck is crooked so I'm going to fix that. Okay, now exiting out of here I have to do the seed beads again. So I'm going to pick up six 11 O's. I'm going to pass through this three millimeter. Then I'm going to go up through the checkmate. Pull it tight. Then I'm going to go through this 80 and through the three millimeter, the gold one. Then I have to pick up six. 11s again. Then go down through this bead. And then 6 again. And we're going to go full circle around this checkmate. So I have to go through this one here. And I'm also going to go through the 80 like this. And I go like this and I pull it tight. Okay. Now, we did a thread path. I think it was on this side. And we went through this bronze bead like this and through the checkmates and we did the same thing here. That was really important that we did that because if you don't do that you will see your thread there. It's exposed for some reason. So I have to do it on this side to match this side to tighten it up. So I'm going to go up through this checkmate. Okay, so I'm coming out of the bronze and it's connecting these two so there's no gap there. I also had to do this in the bracelet. And then I'm going to turn and go through this 3mm check fire polish. And then through the gold, not the gold, the bronze, 8 -0. And then I have to go 
through here. So see right here, you can see this gap. I don't like that gap. So we're going to close that gap up by passing through right there. And then I have to turn, and I'm going to go through this 3 millimeter and through the 80 seed bead, and we're going to do the fancy edging with the seed beads. Okay, like that. And sometimes these go over this if you pull it too, too tight, the seed beads go over it. So I come back and I make sure it's all flattened so it's not super tight down there. And now we're going to do the edging with the seed beads, which I think is like Pico or Pica edging. I'm going to pick up two seed beads. I'm coming out of the 80 seed bead. I'm going to go through this 11 right here, which is going to connect this much better to the rest of the piece. See, like that. Through there. And then I have to pass through this 80, and I'm also going to go through the 3 millimeter. And then I have to pick up two beads. And I'm going to go through this 11 -0. Okay, so I'm surrounding that 3 millimeter, and then I have to go through this 3 millimeter here and through the 80 seed bead. I'm going to pick up two 11s. I'm going to go through this 11. And then through this 80 and through the 3 millimeter beside it. Pull it tight. This is what it looks like so far. Again, I'm going to pick up two. Go through this one. And then I have to go through this 3 millimeter and through the 80. Now there is this center point where we're going to add our earring finding and we have to reinforce that area. We're going to add more beads in that spot and that's in the very center so I have to pay attention that I don't skip over that. I have this now. Again pick up two beads. Go through the C bead here. And then through the 80 C bead and through the 3 millimeter. Like that. Pick up two 11s through this 11 here. And then turn and go through right here. And through the 8. And pull it tight. Okay, now it looks good. And this bead right here, going straight up, this is our center where we put our earring finding. I'm almost there. I have to do this one more time and then we're going to do the earring finding. So two seed beads again. Go through this 11 0. And then go through this 8 0 and through the next 3 millimeter. Okay. So to do the earring finding, I think what I did was two seed beads, yeah, two seed beads, and you have to decide which side you like more, which side you want to be your front, let's see the Picasso, which side looks better, mm, I don't think it matters. I'm going to go through, I have my two seed beads on, I'm going to go through my earring finding like this, the side that I want to be the front, and then I have to pick up another seed bead. Okay, see, see how that looks right there? We're doing that. And then I'm going to go down through this seed bead. Like this. Okay, and I need to reinforce this, so I'm going to go through it again. I'm going to pass through the 3 millimeter again. 
pull it tight. I'm going to go through all of these seed beads again and do the earring finding. And I only do this like twice. It is just earrings. You can do it three times, I guess, if you want, but they're just earrings, so two times is pretty good. Okay, like that. And then through the three millimeter and through the 80 seed bead. Pulling it tight. And then I just continue this weave, picking up two seed beads at a time. I have to go through this 80 here. Not 80, 11, I mean. It's beside the 80, though. And then I go through the 80, and then I have to reposition to the next bead that I have to surround with seed beads. Like that. Pick up two. Go through this seed bead. And then go through the next 3 millimeter. And through the 80. Pull it tight. Pick up two. Go through this 11 ohm. Through this 8 ohm. And the next 3 millimeter. 3 millimeter. Boy, I said that weird. Pick up two. Two again, through the 11 o and the 8 o and through the 3 millimeter. Two again, I'm going to go through this 11 again. We're almost at the close, where we're actually not going to pick up two. We're going to pick up one. Then I'm going to go through this three millimeter and through the eight o. Okay, I have to turn this for you guys. Now I have to go through this eleven o seed bead right here that one. Okay, that's right next to our checkmate. We're going to connect these two sides together with one seed bead. See this right here? I'm going to go through this seed bead here. Let's see, is this loose on me? It is a little loose right there, isn't it? Why does it do that? I'm just going to do what I did earlier and I'm going to pull these tight. Okay, let's pick that bead up again. Go through this 11. Connect the two sides. And then through the 8 o And I'll also go through the next 3 millimeter bead there. Okay. And I think I'm going to pull this tail tight to see what that looks like. And now we have to flatten it out because, you know, we warped it all, pulling it and flipping it all over the place. And uh, that's the back side. This is the front side. And uh, there we go. It's really pretty. And now we have to tie knots. So with tying knots, you're just going to follow the same thread paths that you've taken. You this is always the thing. Whenever you tie knots, you never want to make up new thread paths where there aren't any. You always want to follow 
old thread pass. You never want to shoot across from a bead that you've never shot across from before because you will warp your piece. So, um, coming out of this here, I can actually tie a knot right here in this spot. So to do that, I have to make sure that I pull that thread tight. And I'm just going to take my needle, pass down through here, pull it through until I have a loop, and then I'm going to pass back up through right here. And I'm going to go through this loop two times. There's one, here it's two. And I'm going to slide this knot down. And then I'm going to pass down through this bead. And again, I will tie another knot here. And I'll go through here. And I'll go through this bead, I'll tie a knot here, I'll go down through here. And I just weave through following my old thread pass tying knots. And then this one over here, once you get done tying knots with this one, and I do tie like five, six knots, and I pass through a lot of the beads just to reinforce the piece because it makes it stiffer because it is kind of a soft earring because we made it with thread. And so uh, this one over here, you're going to want to do the same thing. You're going to want to weave through. If you want, you could tie knots right in here in this row going around. If you're able to fit your needles through there, and you're just going to do the same thing. Tie several knots, reinforce it, use up a lot of your thread, and try to make the piece stiffer by tying threads and filling up the beads with the tails. So this is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. This is a really cool project. It's very different, and I'm looking forward to showing you how to make the bracelet. The bracelet is incredible. It's a really cool piece. This is it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like this video, leave me a comment, and subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and make sure you click the bell button to get notified whenever I upload new videos. And check me out on my social media sites. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. Thanks for watching.